Hi, this is Deadman. If you're watching this video, I assume you're old enough to see gore, violence, swearing, and general adult content. If you aren't old enough, come back with some ID. Or a fake one. into the new world. I thought that it would be glorious. I was wrong. Once again, I'm a fan of having the developer or publisher logo showing up in a unique way upon booting the game up. This intro is very similar to Far Cry 5's with it being a peaceful guitar, but this time it's sounding a little distorted. You also get a glimpse at the new vibrant post-apocalyptic world. Yep, once again I'm taking wins off for the silent protagonist. New Dawn is letting us know immediately which ending is canon to the game. My name is Carmina Wright. The day I was born was the day the world collapsed. I'm totally getting Judgment Day vibes from this, and I don't hate it. Those that survived had to make new lives underground. Up above, there was nothing but ash and cold and death. People thought it would last forever, but without us up there, life returned. First off, it's funny how the majority of the people survive, since Hope County is about 90% preppers. Second, I really love how we get to see a vibrant, colorful apocalypse rather than a gray, dusty one. Mom and Dad were heartbroken by what they saw. The world they'd known gone forever. But not me. I'd never seen anything so perfect. Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. It wasn't always easy, but for a time, there was peace and prosperity. A new home, a new life, a new normal. But, like all things in this world, it was too good to last. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. What's the fucking highwaymen? They're gonna kill us! Get up, Captain, get up! Jesus, Barnes, keep screaming like that, you're gonna bring them all down on us. You lead, we'll follow. In other words... Hey! Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Fingers off those triggers. Let's see what they want. I can respect a diplomatic solution. It likely wouldn't work, but it's great characterization for Rush trying to reason with the twins to begin with. While Mickey and Lou are probably the least charismatic of the Far Cry villains list, they definitely nail being an imposing force. Especially because there are two of them. Save yourself! That's... one way to do it. Holy shit, is that some kind of saw launcher? That's amazing! Agreed. The saw launcher is badass and one of my favorite weapons. Carmina! Oh, thank god. I was so worried. Kim's alive! All right, guys. You know how to handle a gun. You know your way around this valley better than anybody. So? So? Sitting around moping isn't doing any good. Look, Rush was supposed to help us build someplace safe. Now, it's up to us. There are brave people here scattered around. We just have to find them. Kim is a problem solver, and I love it. Something I definitely like is having a centralized hub. 
Outside of the outposts, it's fun to build up prosperity, giving it more functions as you go. Oh, um, uh, hello? This is Bean, founder of Wikibenia? I could use a hand chasing down something important, like real important. Anybody? Uh, okay, I'm hanging up now. As with Far Cry 5, you can hover over quests to hear each person's unique cry for help. Hey, I tell you what, if you can find me the fuel I need, we'll go rip off Highwaymen together. A unique feature to New Dawn is the Expeditions, which lets you get a massive amount of supplies for doing what's essentially a side quest. Plus, they work as fun mini-missions. I'm Bean, creator of Wikibenia. You know, your one-stop shop for maps and intel. Wikibenia, just the tips! It's kinda hilarious this even exists. But Bean is hella handy, giving you map updates and info about the world. If you reach around my back now, I'll reach around yours later! Hey! Phrasing! So the cool thing about New Dawn is yes, it reuses the map assets from Far Cry 5, but with the flora and fauna being transformed by the nuclear strike, it's actually really cool to see it all again. Also, like I said, I like how the post-apocalypse is depicted here, with everything being vibrant and colorful. I also think it's hilarious that a saw blade launcher is considered a stealth weapon. I can explain everything. Look, okay, yes. I lost my clothes in a game of cards, ha ha ha. I have a problem, all right? I didn't mean for things to get this bad. Admitting you have a problem is the first step. Hello? Oh gosh, is that how my voice sounds? Welcome to the club, buddy. It's been almost two years and I still hate the sound of my voice. I got scouts collecting hot tips and I'll get maps again. And well, you'll see. With my business plan, Wikibenia will go global. Just like daddy always talked about how it was before. Everyone will help us and give us donations. It'll be great! Wikipedia reference. Oh my god, my dude. I am in, like, the worst real-life come down that's ever graced the freaking planet right now. I love Selene because she's such a drama queen, but she's really sweet and caring. I grow these, uh, herbs. You know, herbs. Don't ask me what kind. It's the kind that work. Okay, that kind. I can recultivate this stuff, sure, but, like, honestly? Between you and me, my dude? That shit down there is my freaking lifeline. I won't last till the next harvest, next month without it. Fun fact, Selene hasn't been sober since the bombs dropped. People die from like the dumbest shit these days. Get me my kit and I'll keep you and your people ticking. So you can die from violence like your god intended, instead of like stepping on a nail. Move your supple ass, my dude! Compliments. I can set up my lab in your home camp garden or whatever, and I can help you boost your immune systems and get you feeling real good. A constitution and junk. Yes, indeed. Dying of dysentery is not something I'd like to do. Radioactive honey badger! A neat thing about outposts is that in the world, as well as the map, there's a big plume of smoke letting you know right away where it is. I can dig the little cutscene that shows off your character and partner when you clear an outpost. Even in post-apocalyptic Montana, we're still in Merca, dammit. Keep the throwable cans! So what do you say we pay them a visit? Maybe take a stroll on the beach after we rip them off? <laughs> no, just a joke. The, the highwaymen would be pissed off and we need to get the fuck out of there quick. The fifth expedition you can do lets you go to the wreck of the Paladin from Splinter Cell Blacklist. Okay, so for sure, I have to award wins for the stealth suit from Splinter Cell. However, I have to dock some wins at the same time because, come on, Ubisoft has been dragging around the dead horse of Splinter Cell and keeps on beating it. It's been eight years, Ubisoft. You know what we want. Name's Grace, and if I wasn't blind as fuck, I'd be fighting right beside you. So while you can run into regular wildlife that's slightly irradiated, there's also four variants that are super irradiated and will give you a bad time. Oh my god. Jesus, I thought you were dead. Well then, I guess Rush had it covered. It's pretty lame that you're able to play co-op, but it doesn't seem as friendly towards it. Scott had to grab a spare car and follow us, rather than being able to be in the same vehicle. You're not gonna believe what I saw. 
One night the mine was attacked by people who looked like they were out of the Stone Age. They were fighting against shotguns, using only bows and arrows. They took shots and kept on coming. Listen, I don't believe in wizards or magic, but I know what I saw. Those people had something. Something that I can't explain. I can. It's bliss infused with crack cocaine. It's not perfect, and there's still work to do, but it sure is nice to have something to be happy about again. Sometimes Tallahassee's right. You gotta enjoy the little things. Even if that means destroying a whole lot of little things. You better put those down. I don't want to scare the kids. That's dirty. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't like it when people lie to little kids. I hate to admit it, but that was pretty funny. We'll come for you. <laughs> don't drop it. This is what I referred to before. The twins are memorable for their sheer brutality, like, even in a war, who makes a kid hold a live grenade? I'm gonna win it for characterization, but I'm not happy about it. Hell yeah, Sharky here! I got a kid to look after now, so I did the responsible thing and I took over a stronghold full of explosives. No, 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 put that down, buddy! Put that down, little guy! Oh, that's very dangerous, careful! I know you look cute with it, but it's dangerous! Sharky is still a delight, even after the apocalypse hit. Little Blade's got me run off my feet and I just need five minutes to myself. Maybe have a shit and shake my pits. Spoken like a true parent. Drink! Drink! Peer pressure! Drink! Doy! <laughs> I should've warned you. Yeah, the party liquor's just asking off the car engines. We here at Dead Man Gaming do not condone peer pressure. We do, however, find it hilarious. No button! Blade! Blade, hands off the- Blade, it's my turn! Stop pressing the- Stop pressing the button, Blade! Come on! <laughs> Alright, fine, be that way. Just another part of myself that I'm gonna give to you. I can't get mad at you, you're so damn adorable. Sharky arguing with Baby Blade while mowing down highwaymen is adorable and hilarious. God damn, baby, you are too good at this. Okay, save some kills for the rest of us. You know, now that I think about it, uh, this, this is a terrible place for a baby. Yeah, just terrible. All the sharp, rusted metal and sulfur fumes. Uh, I don't really know what I was thinking. Parenting win. I mean, you definitely should have realized that before now, but better late than never. I was taking her for a test drive when these assholes showed up and caught me with my pants down. Not literal, of course. Don't let them catch you with your pants down. Rule number three, beware of bathrooms. There she is. Like I said, not finished. Mostly the flying part. Mm, but ain't she a beauty? It sucks the Carmina isn't suited for flying anymore, but it makes a badass boat now. Having said that, using the Carmina to escape the highwaymen is awesome. You lose something, darling? Hey, baby. Hey, you know, if you're busy, I could always come yes. back. No. This is legitimately one of the best parts of the game. I love being able to help the Rye family get back together. Took more bullets than is humanly possible and vanished into the forest. The high women call them ghosts. But I know what I saw. Those people were doped to the fucking gills. We need what they have. You realize we're talking about going to Joseph Seed, a man who terrorized and brutalized our family for years. I suppose it's the lesser of two evils, but not by a whole lot. Are you okay? Did he hurt you? The bearded man? He was just giving me some food. If he ever shows up here again, you come straight to your mom and me. Do you understand? I'm hungry. He said we have to find food wherever we can. Yeah, but we don't take anything from him, not even food. In a cruel twist, Joseph thought the nukes would lead to salvation, and it turns out he was wrong. I think him offering food to Carmina was him attempting to atone for his mistake. I can't believe that fucking worked. I, I think I owe that monkey gun an HJ or something. Helping participate in a destruction derby to save Blade's mama is definitely a win. Can you hear my voice? Apparently, Joseph got just enough radiation that he's unlocked his mutant power of teleporting. I'm not fully sure what's going on, but I do like this bit of environmental puzzle. The one who stood against me became all that I had left. I could have judged them, but instead, I forgave them. 
and then I gave them a new purpose. It's implied here that the deputy eventually came around to Joseph's way of thinking, and they basically suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. They also became the judge in New Eden. I've seen Herc out there fighting the highwaymen in this beat-up old car like the world's shittiest superhero. Please go help him. At least he's trying. Seeing the deputy turn into the judge, a willing servant of Joseph Seed, is just sad. Especially since they still never say a word. You are what I was expecting. Well, I was expecting Joseph, so the feeling is mutual. I'm the one they chose to lead. I have protected them from the locusts and the snakes. I have kept us all alive and safe within these walls. Not the old man, me! Damn, dude. Ethan is channeling Voss with that little outburst. A non-believer is a sinner. A non-believer does not know our ways. A non-believer has relit our most sacred flame. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Got <he. laughs> You have to journey to the north of Hope County to meet Joseph in the flesh, and going through that fog wall and coming out the other side gave me chills. I did everything that I was asked. I sacrificed them. Myself, my family. I led us into the new world. I thought that it would be glorious. I was wrong. I have waited so long for someone to come. I've begun to despair. I love seeing Joseph broken down. Not in a way because, oh good, he got what he deserved way, but in a way of seeing character growth. Seeing characters getting what they want and it not being what they want is always fun and refreshing to see. Kill the beast. That sudden color change in intensity is gonna give me a bad trip, man. Also, yeah, eating a bliss infused apple is a cool way to get superpowers. Our miracle allowed us to survive, but its gifts are not unconditional. It nourishes what is in a person's soul. But if that soul is corrupt, the miracle extracts a terrible price the serum amplifies everything that is inside so good becomes great bad becomes worse it just wouldn't be far cry without a drug trip we can no longer hope for joseph to save us he is not coming back we must put him out of our minds and and father it was in this moment ethan knew he done goofed Adding in perks that essentially give you superpowers is definitely a great move. It shuffles up the gameplay some while not being too broken. Far Cry Blood Dragon reference. Actually, there's quite a few in here. Get out of here! Now! This feels real familiar. Like we've been down this road before? You could almost attribute it to insanity. Doing the same things over and over, expecting a different result. You just keep asking for it, don't you? You want it? You want the stick? <laughs> Here's the fucking stick. I knew it was coming. Usually stories like this have a shocking death, but man, it still hits hard because Rush was such a good character in person. Oh, fuck! I'm gonna spend all night wiping those hopes and dreams off my boots. That's fucked up, but yeah, it's kind of funny. You know, before you showed up, everything was fucking. When you came in, 
with your fancy train and your fancy people trying to make this place into something that is never <laughs> And when we tried to be reasonable, you thought it'd be a good idea to stir up the pot. Uh, over and over and over. Because you thought there was a hope for your future? There's no hope for you. No future for any of you. Uh. So while they aren't charismatic, they still have some nuance to them. Mickey and Lou grew up in an apocalyptic wasteland, so it's perfectly understandable as to why they would have no hope, because... Well, how do you come back from total world annihilation? It doesn't by any means justify what they do with the Highwaymen, but it serves to show why they may feel that hope is pointless. Which adds another layer of everything, considering this is set in Hope County. I love that right before you activate your wrath ability, you can see the visualization of it by the bliss smoking off of your skin. Also, oh shit is right. Damn, that was all kinds of awesome and brutal. Too bad the game is over, since there's no way we could have survived a point-blank shotgun blast. It's not over, idiot. Sweet, I'm having too much fun for this to be over. Michelle, Louise, I need you to listen to me. Why? You're not coming with us. I don't have a choice. Your father- Daddy says if you're not with us, you're against us. It's not that simple. Yes, it is. Gotta go, Mom. Dad's here. Michelle, you two need to take care of each other. Because your dad, he won't. He has a lot of big plans, but everything he does ends in violence. Dad solves problems. He creates them. He leaves a trail of bodies behind him. He doesn't care who gets hurt. Don't end up like him. Promise me you won't be like him. This actually does a lot to endear us to the twins. If they had stayed with their mother and had had her as a role model instead of their father, they may have been allies rather than enemies. Again, this doesn't excuse what they do, but rather gives us insight on why they're so messed up and crave violence. Rush, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got on that train. I'm sorry I brought you to Hope County. We'll always remember you. You took a risk for us, and it cost you your life. This is all my fault. Rush, I promise we'll make you proud. I'm not crying, you're crying. Seriously though, Raina Hardesty does an amazing job conveying the absolute devastation Carmina must be feeling right now. You somebody who can, uh, uh, you know, land a punch, get your ass over to the fight pit. Just follow the signs. Catchy slogan. But first, I need to know you could throw a punch, really hey, make the shit out of somebody, you know? So take a swing at this machine here to measure what you got. Now, I broke it when I gave it a shot. Let's see if you got half as much. That's an interesting job application. Used to be a fighter myself. I wasn't half bad. Back in the day, I went on a little winning streak. Knocked out 17 guys in a row. Huh? Seven fucking team. Had to quit. Too lethal. Punched the last guy so hard, he farted his brains out. Seriously, guys, seriously, his brains. And that made me pull up short. I had to think to myself, I got a gift, but I can't control it. I think you're the kind of asshead I could work with. The asset. I, I mean, asset. I'll be in your ear the whole time, so if you fuck up, or you're in over your head, you'll be able to hear me laugh. Come on in! 
<laughs> Who the fuck is he? He is our numero uno problem solver. Mm -hmm. He's gonna take us up north and hook us up with some crazy... Fuck is it, fruit? A sacred fruit. The miracle of New Eve. Yeah, that's it. Our boy here says that fruit will give you strength like you can't fucking believe. And you thought you couldn't like Ethan any less than you already do. Guess again. You're going soft in your head like your pops. <laughs> yeah, dude had it coming. You should have known better. You got the chance of a lifetime here, pal. Take a deep breath and make it count. This breach and clear moment is bad ass. So let's end this. I really like the multicolored smoke being thrown in crisscross. Hey, Mickey, you okay? No! Honesty. Hey. Hey! Do not die first! You do not get to die first! I'm the oldest! I go first! God damn it! Lou! Props to Kara Ricketts for conveying just how destroyed Mickey is in her and Lou's final moments. They weren't good people by any means, but they did love each other deeply, and as much wrong as they did, it's still heart-wrenching to see. You know, Rabbit, you remind me of our mom. She had hope. She had dreams. just wanted to fucking make things better and I should have listened to her. But things just got carried away. <sighs> do what you gotta do. As much as I've said the twins aren't as memorable as any of the other villains, they probably moved me more than any of the other villains combined. <laughs> The soul is not clean. You chose poorly. So consuming radioactive, bliss-infused fruit when your soul isn't clean turns you into some kind of smoky, abhorrent beast. Noted. My soul has become a cancer. I am a monster. And I have only spread suffering and death in the name of God. My family is all ash. But Eden is dust. And there is no redemption for this. No atonement. only the justice of God's head. In this vicious cycle, give me God's justice. Release me. Another stellar performance by Greg Brick. I love his portrayal here in the character writing. Joseph went 20 years living with what he deems failure, and to ease his pain and prevent him from hurting anyone else, he asks you to kill him. That's powerful. They went above and beyond with this character. He'd be proud of us. Look at what we've built together. How far we've come. There's always going to be trouble out there, but we'll manage, right? Did 
There were so many times that I thought we were going to fail. That all of this would be for nothing. But we just didn't give up. Because we had hope. Here's to hope. I genuinely love this hopeful ending that New Dawn ends on. Whether it ends up being canon or not, I'm glad this timeline has some peace. I think I actually had more fun playing New Dawn than I did 5. I think it had to do with the way the missions were structured. They went back to being a singular point to start missions, rather than doing side quests to fill up a bar, and boom, quest is ready. Or even in the case of 4, where you could choose between 2 or 3 different other missions, but there wasn't a specific linear path you could take with them. It may have also been the setting, too. I really liked it being a vibrant post-apocalypse. It definitely gave way to having unique areas like Northern Hope County and all the hallucination stuff that was encountered. Overall, I think the story ended up better just for the fact that it's tighter as it's, again, linear. And I also like the idea of building up a community after the apocalypse hit. The music was pretty standard Ubisoft music. None of it other than the title menu really stuck out to me, but it's all very good and competent. There's a difficulty present here that's kinda cool. Any given quest, weapon, and enemy will be labeled from 1 to 4, and it's kind of a cool way to do things. It's a neat visual way of letting you know how powerful everything is without getting bogged down by a bunch of numbers. I feel like the graphics definitely looked better here. I know Far Cry 5 had great visuals, but for some reason they just looked off to me. But, with all the color thrown around and a more compact world to play in, I definitely feel they improved here. In closing, I adore New Dawn. I don't know if it's the simple and compact story or the setting, but it's my favorite Far Cry game to date. I'm definitely looking forward to 6 and eventually going back to playing 1 and 2 for the first time and attempt to cover Primal at some point. But for now, I'm going to let Far Cry settle and await 6. Thank you for watching and try not to die out there. Kim. You know I put them here somewhere. Hold on. Oh, they were just here. Where did you put them? You lose something, darling? Hey, baby. Hey, you know, if you're busy, I could always come no. back. No. <laughs> hey, kiddo. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Twins, Basil. Twins.